Didn't the famous philosopher Christopher Wallace once say, more protein chips, more supply problems? Well, even if he didn't say that, it has been a notorious problem for the Simply Good Foods leadership team that keeps going on and on and on in. I'll decode that introductory statement a bit later in this content, but on October 24th of 2024, the Simply Good Foods company reported its fiscal 2024 fourth quarter earnings for the period ending August 31st of 2024. As I usually do with these quarterly updates, I will start by running through some high level financial data to update you on how the Simply Good Foods company performed recently, but more importantly, I'll use the earnings report notes I took from listening to the earnings conference call in any relevant publicly disclosed news to give context for my expanded strategic commentary on trends that are happening within the nutritional snacking space. For those new to my content on the Simply Good Foods company and might not be too familiar with the functional CPG brands that are within that portfolio, it's Quest Nutrition, Atkins, yes, originating from the Atkins diet, and the newly acquired Only What You Need, or better known as OWN, that finalized on June 13th. So there won't be a full quarter of financial impact with OWN just yet, but that doesn't mean I'll be light on those brand insights. Okay, enough with the housekeeping stuff. Let's get into some of those financial numbers first. In the fourth quarter of fiscal 2024, the Simply Good Foods Company portfolio reported generating revenue of $375.7 million, which was up 17.2% year over year. But don't get too hyped on that growth because it's actually quite flattish year over year when you take into consideration the 9.1 percentage point contribution from the own acquisition and another 7.7 .7 percentage point benefit that came from an extra week compared to last year's fiscal fourth quarter. And then on a quarter over quarter sequential basis, revenue was up 12.2%, again, greatly impacted by the own acquisition that closed on June 13th of 2024. In terms of geographic performance, legacy revenue within North America was up 8.8% year over year, but international decreased 12.3% year over year. At this point, Simply Good Foods Company generates about 98% of its total revenue from the North American market. Looking quickly at the margin side, the company had gross margins of 38.8%, which was up 120 basis points year over year, but down 110 basis points quarter over quarter. It was noted that the improving gross margins were the result of lower legacy business ingredient and packaging costs, the inclusion of own and the extra week in the fiscal period. Since this is the company's fiscal fourth quarter, I want to quickly run through the annual performance as well. In this last year, Simply Good Foods had revenue of $1.33 billion, which was up 7.1% year over year. But again, most of that growth was positively impacted by the acquisition of OWN and the 53rd week in the fiscal year 2024. But jumping back into some of those fourth quarter insights, the total Simply Good Foods retail takeaway for the 14 weeks ending September 1st of 2024 increased about 6% year over year in the US measured channels. If you combine the measured and unmeasured channels, retail takeaway growth is estimated at around 8%. As a portfolio, the Simply Good Foods company is below the measured channel nutritional snacking categorical average of about 8%. But that's due to the Atkins brand dragging down the positive performance of Quest Nutrition and OWN. So let's separate the individual brands out and we can start with a recap of how Atkins performed during this quarter. Even if you haven't been an avid follower of my content for the past several years, I guess you could intuitively assume that it's been tough sledding recently for the weight management category. This has been made even more complicated with the approval of pharmaceutical weight loss solutions. But even though the weight management category is evolving, company supported consumer research shows that about 80% of consumers are looking to lose weight or maintain a healthy eating lifestyle. And Atkins is distinctly and uniquely positioned as the most trusted low carb, low sugar solution. Moreover, when consumers try Atkins products, they are pleased and delighted. Yet, as you will see from these brands' results in the quarter, there continues to be a slight disconnect between what people say about the Atkins brand and the company's ability to properly reach those people to create positive commercial results. 
but I'm not telling the Simply Good Foods team anything they don't already fully recognize already as the company is currently midstream and on track around the execution of its Five Point Atkins revitalization plan. In the fourth quarter, retail takeaway in US measured channels for the Atkins brand was down 8.4% year over year. And then it's estimated that combining US measured and unmeasured channels would result in about a 5% negative retail takeaway. This is mostly driven by Amazon offsetting some of the measured channel softness by having retail takeaway growth of 15% year over year with the Atkins brand. That being said, early indicators of the Atkins revitalization plan might be showing positive momentum. While performance is still not great, these numbers were another consecutive quarter of slight percentage point improvement. Additionally, the brand's revised Atkins Way advertising that aligns with the evolving consumer views and conversation on weight wellness has started to roll out and should provide a much needed tailwind for Atkins. That advertising campaign has coincided with a packaging update, website refresh, and additional new product innovation that spans from Atkins Strong, focused on GLP-1 users, to Indulge, and even a new coffee house lineup. In fiscal 2025, the Atkins revitalization plan will move into its next phase that seeks to enhance profitability and long-term sustainable growth, but could create some additional short-term revenue headwinds with expected distribution losses, volume declines due to a reduction in marketing spend, and the discontinuation of its Canadian export business. But maybe it's time to transition into taking a deeper look at the recent performance of the convenient nutrition brand that continues to kind of outshine its legacy brand portfolio counterpart. Retail takeaway for Quest Nutrition across the track channels increased 8.8% year over year, continuing to outperform the active nutrition segment of the nutritional snacking category. This outperformance is being driven by an increase in household penetration, significant base velocity growth, increasing buy rates, distribution gains, and new product introductions. If we add in the unmeasured channels, which is about 23% of total Quest retail sales, the blended total takeaway growth of Quest Nutrition increases a bit to about 10%. Quest bars are still the king of Amazon and that translated into e-commerce growth of about 21% this quarter, which has started to increase again, up 450 basis points quarter over quarter. Looking at specific Quest product categories more closely, retail takeaway growth of bars this quarter was only about 1% year over year. While Quest bar growth isn't much lower than the total sub-segment, Recent performance is lagging internal expectations and Simply Good Foods company leadership have stated that they fast-tracked a new bar format innovation that should launch in February called Quest Overload. For those interested, the new Quest Overload bars will have unique texture, mouthfeel, and loaded with inclusions. And then on the snack segment of Quest Nutrition, which now accounts for basically half of all measured channel retail sales, saw retail takeaway growth of 17% year over year. But if we analyze one layer deeper, the salty side of the Quest snack segment had quarterly retail takeaway growth of about 34%. Quest chips now represent about 25% of the total Quest nutrition revenue and provide a substantial share of new users to the brand. And I've sounded like a broken record when it comes to stating that salty snacks are where the excitement and focus should be placed within Quest nutrition as the size of the total addressable salty snacks market suggests significant and continued upside on this business. Yet going back to that introductory statement, the biggest challenge for Simply Good Foods leadership over the last few years has been overcoming Quest Chips supply constraints. The current capacity issue was caused when their second manufacturer that came online during the quarter faced some initial production challenges that are said to be solved now, which will be extremely important as Quest Nutrition will bring its larger pack size nationwide at Costco next calendar year. But beyond that, I'm interested to continue seeing how the crackers perform over time and if they tackle other salty snacks categories like popcorn, pretzels, or trail mix next. And then finally, let's analyze what's going on with the newest portfolio brand own. And I'm not too sure how long everyone will allow me to take this victory lap, but as I documented in content previously, I predicted Simply Good Foods Company would acquire the plant-based protein shake brand way back in early 2021. Why? 
Well, simply put, OWN aligns with the Simply Good Foods portfolio platform strategy, and it reaches a new incremental consumer segment that's highly appealing. Additionally, OWN is the fastest growing RTD protein shake in terms of dollar sales and the third largest sports nutrition multi-pack brand in the market. But how did OWN perform this quarter, even if about only like 81% of the days were officially included in these Simply Good Foods company results? According to IRI, the brand's retail takeaway growth for the quarter was about 112% year over year, coming from both distribution gains and velocity growth. And it's not just one customer or sales channel either, as OWN has significantly accelerated across all major retail customers. So if you added in the estimated unmeasured channel retail takeaway, combined growth would still be an impressive 81% year over year. The OWN integration work is progressing as planned, and Simply Good Foods will capture about 80% of the cost synergies by the end of its fiscal year-end 2025. Based on revenue growth models, Simply Good Foods leadership expects own fiscal 2025 net sales to be in the range of 135 million to 145 million. I think that 20 to 30% growth projection is quite conservative as I'd expect solid ACV growth for own along with higher velocities and increased items per store. But something tells me this is just a financial modeling thing as that same growth rate over the next three years puts them at their longer term expectation of doubling the own business. So I'm personally not reading too much into that as some signal that protein RTD supply constraints will worsen and Simply Good Foods won't have the available line time to feed the own growth. Moreover, I am only seeing positives ahead in terms of brand strength and awareness improvements. As own will get a boost from the Simply Good Foods go-to-market scale capabilities and category advisor relationships with almost all top retailers. Finally, while I'm not too sure anything new or groundbreaking will come out in the next year, it would be silly to think under the ownership of the Simply Good Foods company that OWN wouldn't expand into new formats such as bars and potentially chips. But overall, whether it's bars, liquids, or other snacking formats, these convenient nutrition subcategories collectively continue to be a volume standout versus most of the standard grocery store spaces. Then, if you consider some of those longer-term secular trends like wellness-minded snacking and convenience, and it's an exciting functional CPG space to be building within over the next five to 10 years. But I hope you enjoyed the first principles thinking that went into my latest YouTube video. If you did, can you do me a favor by hitting that like button? That quick and free action helps YouTube know my content is worth spreading to more people. Also, we're getting really close to reaching my next subscriber goal, and it would be great if you join me on this journey. But to do that, we need to fix the fact that slightly more than three-fourths of you that are watching this video right now are not subscribed to my YouTube channel, and that hurts my feelings. Regardless, I want to thank you for giving me some of your attention and time, and I'll see you on the next one.